once. Did I say mouth too many times? No. Mouth, 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 mouth. No, we don't. Oh. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Steffi's Wine Club. Today we're going to discuss tasting, which is really exciting because I know it can be a little bit intimidating, but it's obviously the most important and enjoyable part of wine is tasting it. So there's kind of two areas of tasting I wanted to talk about today. The first is in a restaurant when you're being brought a bottle of wine you've ordered, and the second is for enjoyment or personal logging or discovering new flavors and wines and just paying closer attention and taking a deeper look. So let's start with the restaurants. So when you're in a restaurant and you order a bottle of wine, almost always the server or the sommelier is going to come to your table and give you a little sip and ask if you approve of the wine. And it's really important to remember that when you order a bottle of wine at a restaurant, you can't send it back because you don't like it. You have to send it back for a fault if you're going to send it back. So what you're looking for is the taste or smell of mildew or mold or like an old basement and what that probably means is that the wine has gone bad because the cork has failed and air has gotten into the wine which has let it go bad in the bottle so anything outside of a major fault like that you're not gonna be able to send the wine back or if you try it's gonna be really frowned upon so now that we're done with that we're gonna talk about my favorite kind of tasting, the more complex and interesting and in-depth tasting. And this has a few different steps and it uses a lot of your senses and it really offers a comprehensive view. And even if you don't remember every single step or every single thing I'm going to say in this video when you go to taste, even remembering a few of them every time is going to just help you get more out of your wine drinking experience. So before we begin the actual steps to tasting, I want to talk a little bit about the mouth and the important role that the mouth plays in tasting, obviously. There's four tastes your mouth can actually taste. Um, it's sweet, salty, umami, and sour. And umami, in case you don't know what that is, it's sort of the meaty, savory taste that's in meat or mushrooms. If you take like a raw button mushroom and put it on your tongue, you're going to get almost pure umami. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, that could be a cool little experiment to aid your tasting. Two other sensations in your mouth you're probably aware of is spice and alcohol. And these actually aren't tastes the way that sweet and sour are. These are pain responses. And it's your pain receptors in your mouth reacting to spice or to alcohol and giving you that burning or tingling sensation and while you're not going to find spice in wine at least not that kind of spice you are definitely going to find alcohol and you want to pay attention to the sort of alcohol burn that that wine is going to give you in your mouth step one sights so before you even take a sip or smell your wine at all or really even touch your wine that much for that matter you're going to want to use your sight to discover what you can about the wine the first thing you're going to pay attention to is color most importantly, is it red, is it white, or is it rosé? It's important to pay attention because that can tell you a lot about the flavors you're going to be looking for in the wine. Um, the next thing you're going to want to notice is if there's any color difference between rim and center. And what that can tell you is how old the wine is. So if a wine has been aged, it's going to be a little bit more oxidized because a tiny bit of oxygen is going to be allowed into the bottle through the cork and through the bottling process. And that sort of tawny or reddish brown rim is going to tell you that it's been more aged and that's in a red wine for the most part. You're not very often going to find the rim different in white wines because we don't age white wines for as long. The next thing you're going to look for is legs. So when you tilt your glass to the side like this and then back up, you're going to notice that a little bit of that wine stays on the rim and the longer it takes to move back down the rim and if it breaks off into tiny little streams that we call legs, that's going to suggest more body. So, and as we talked about last time, body is the mixture of alcohol and sugar, so that's going to give you an idea of how much sweetness and how much alcohol you're going to be perceiving when you do taste the wine. And the last thing you're going to look for is any effervescence. So you're going to want to decide if it's a bubbly, but not just if it's a sparkling wine. Sometimes wines like Moscato or sweeter wines can have a little bit of effervescence to them, and that can give you a real hint as to what to expect when you taste the wine. Okay, step two is smell. So smell or 
bouquet or aroma, you're going to hear a lot of different words for it. Uh, they all mean pretty much the same thing, but it's very, very important to tasting wine. You've probably heard that like smell makes up a majority of taste, and that's totally true. Your olfactory sensors, which are the sensors in your nose, um, make up a huge portion of what you taste when the... Um, sort of flavors move up through your nasal canal. Um, but smelling the wine beforehand is also really important because some smells are stronger than the flavor that corresponds to them, so you might miss things if you're just tasting the wine and not smelling it. What you're gonna look for when you're smelling is the different smells, the different aromas that you can pick up and see if you can draw a correlation between what you're smelling and something you've already smelt in the past. And that's how you're going to say, that's why you hear people being like, oh, this smells like stone fruit or like tropical fruit. And one of the easiest ways to get the smell to come out of the wine more is the famous little a swirl. You're just going to lightly shake your glass, sort of from side to side or front to back, but you're only going to do this with a still wine or a fortified wine. You're never going to do this with a bubbly because all it's going to do is get rid of all the bubbles and that's just sad. So my sort of recommendation for when you're smelling is first pay attention to what fruits you smell. So you're always going to smell fruits in wine. Some wine is more fruit forward and some wine is less fruit forward, but I think the easiest place to start is the fruits because after you've sort of decided what fruits you're smelling, it's easier to spot the outliers of different things like florals, spices, leather, natural smells, sometimes even barnyard or wet leaf smells, which sounds disgusting but can actually be an indicator of a really amazing, really complex wine. Step three, the actual tasting part. I know you're probably like, when are we gonna taste the wine? And the answer is now. So, <laughs> for tasting, tasting is very similar to smell the way I look at it. I start with a little sip. Um, you try to get it all over areas of your mouth because some scientists theorize that different parts of your mouth and tongue um, have different sensations or different tastes. So I like to get it all the way around my mouth. That doesn't mean you need to be like, and like really swish it in there and look like an idiot. You can just like very subtly just like, see how classy was that? I know, I'm a lady. The first thing you're gonna wanna think about when you taste it is how sweet is it? And that's gonna stand out to you right away. Trust me, if it's a sweet wine, you're gonna know. This wine, for example, is a classic Italian red and it's very dry. You can tell because you don't even get a sensation of sweetness. Sometimes alcohol can play off as a sensation of sweetness, but this is very, very dry. I don't get any sweetness at all. Um, but you could get off dry if you had a wine that was slightly sweet or if you had like a true dessert wine that's like almost cloying without food, that would be like a true sweet wine. It has to be really, really sweet for you to call it sweet and just leave it at that. The next thing we're going to look for when we're tasting is tannins. And tannins are going to stand out to you right away as well. It's going to be in a red wine. There's no tannins in white wine. So if you're drinking a white, don't even look for them. Um, but in the red wine, it's going to be that sort of drying sensation on your teeth and inside your lips. And it's going to make you kind of go mm -hmm. that. If you do that, you know it's got tannins. And tannins can be very soft and rounded or very harsh and bold. And the longer you let a wine sit out, usually if you let it like aerate a bit, if it's too heavy on the tannins, that can soften them up a bit. And same with food, if you pair it with food, that can soften them up a bit. And tannins are very important to the structure of the wine. So even though it sounds kind of unpleasant, they're very important. You do want some tannins in a red wine, but you just have to pay attention to the degree and sort of the feeling it leaves in your mouth and decide if you like it. After you've decided on the tannins and the sweetness, you're gonna wanna look at acidity. And we all know what acidity is when you think about biting into a lemon and your mouth starts to just water. And when you take a sip of wine that has high acidity, that's what's gonna happen too. And all wine is gonna have some acidity and acidity can be really important for balancing, but it can also be really, really astringent if there's too much acidity and it's not a balanced wine. So you're gonna wanna pay attention to how much acidity you pick up on. And now to the actual flavor part of tasting. So, like smell, I recommend that you look for the fruit flavors first. They're the most straightforward and we're more familiar with fruit as opposed to like cloves and lavender and all these other weird fun spices you can sometimes find in wine. Then you're probably going to move on to spices. Is it warm? Is it cool? Is it fresh? Is it crisp? It all depends kind of on the flavor profile. Um, for example, reds such as this one that have been aged in oak um, often have a little bit of a smoky component or a spiced component and maybe a little bit of a smoother, creamier component. 
and that can be really important to the structure of the wine as well. And the final part when we're focused on the mouth sensation of wine is going to be the finish. And the finish is exactly what it sounds like. It's the aftertaste of the wine. Um, you're gonna want to pay attention to what flavors are in the aftertaste, which flavors stick around, and how long the aftertaste lasts for. Generally speaking, as a rule of thumb, the more complex and the longer the finish is, um, the higher quality or more expensive the wine is gonna be. Step four, consider. So now that you've tasted and smelt and looked and paid attention to all these different components of tasting, you're gonna actually want to take a second with yourself to reflect on what you think you just tasted. At the end of the day, most of your consideration is going to be whether or not you like the wine, how much you think it would cost or how much you would pay for that wine, if you're gonna drink that wine again or where and when you would drink it again. Um, and I find it really helpful to write all these things down every time I taste any wine just so that I have it stored somewhere I can look back on it if I see it in the store again I'm like oh yeah what did I think about that wine and then you have a nice little even if it's just like a two sentence note like it had cherries I liked it would buy again like if you're really into wine you can get really um, precise with it but I think that's the most important part is just keeping a log of what you liked and what you didn't like the fifth and most important step in my opinion is enjoy so <laughs> thank you so much for tuning into Steffi's wine club you know the drill like comment subscribe head over to Instagram if you want to see more of my wines of the week or more information about my videos and Aviva until next time <laughs>